Thank you everyone for joining us on the Real Estate Investors Show. It's Bill Fairman and Wendy Sweet and our special guest today is John Bowen with Equity Trust. Uh, John, and I'm sorry I have to read this because my uh, professional teleprompter isn't working right now. <laughs> <laughs> he so, and Joe Biden have the same issues. <laughs> uh, John is director and head of education and investor uh, success at Equity Trust. He's an author, a speaker. He has trained thousands of people mm -hmm. during more than 400 workshops and classes, spreading the message about the power of building tax-free wealth and leaving a lasting legacy by investing in what investors know best. And I love that part of your intro because we're all on board with this. Um, people get 401ks, they have money managers that direct it themselves. And most people don't understand the stock market. Um, Plus, John's our friend. You let yeah, the best. Oh yeah, part I'm out. sorry. Our friend, John. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Bill and Wendy. Really appreciate it. Excited to be here, and uh, I've been uh, a listener to the show in the past, and I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And I think you couldn't have said it better there, Bill. That you know, a lot of people they're they're invested in the stock market and mutual funds and bond funds and other types of traditional products and. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but for real estate investors, and I spend most of my time with real estate investors, I'm an investor myself. And when in my upbringing, I'll say in real estate was with a real estate company. And I remember asking the owners of this company, you know, why don't you guys have IRAs or 401ks or other retirement plans? Because academically studying finance, I learned about IRAs and Roth IRAs and 401ks and how you could put money away and grow wealth tax deferred and tax free and there are all these advantages so i asked you know why don't you have an ira or 401k they said well we don't believe in investing in the stock market and that was before i knew you could buy real estate with an ira and then 15 years ago i met our company founder dick desich who's widely known as the pioneer of the self-directed IRA industry bill i'm sure you saw him years ago at different real estate seminars and conferences throughout the country and I mean, it was just mind blowing to me. I said, wow, I can use an IRA and go out and buy real estate, a single family rental property, or I can buy a note or I can make a private money loan. And so it really changed my life 15 years ago when I came to the company and he became my mentor. And we've, uh, we've since grown the business to now just over 40 billion in assets under custody and administration. And most everything we do here is centered around real estate or some other type of private asset investment. It's amazing. I, I tell you, I am personally amazed at how many professionals, high income earners that know nothing about self-directed money. They, they just, they don't understand how it works. They, they, they almost don't even know it exists. And, and, and as an investor, you know, as, as a hard money lender, you know, we raise lots of money through other people's self-directed IRA. Um, you know, that we're able to put in the fund or just buy notes from us. But I always told people, if you understand self-directed money, there's all the lenders that you need. I, I tell real estate investors that, that they need to understand how it works because the more you educate someone on self-directed money, the better off they are and the better off you'll be because it works together. It's just amazing. I, I mean, I've, I finally, after years and years, just opened up an HSA, self-directed HSA, health savings account. And I mean, and there's another thing that people don't understand. You can use your ESA and your HSA and, and, and even your 401k, all the different things that you can do with self-directed money. It just blows my mind. So with all those acronyms, John, would yeah. you like to explain what those are? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, thank you, Wendy. Uh, I'm really glad that you brought up your health savings account and being able to make private money loans and invest in real estate. A lot of people aren't familiar with that type of account and the power behind being able to create what I call compounding interest in the absence of taxation. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is with these self-directed IRAs and HSAs and covered L education savings accounts or your 401k rollover, we like to use the term self-directed because it signifies to an individual that they can direct their money on their own. They, they don't have to rely on just a few different mutual fund selections or traditional stock market investments. And so as far as compounding interest in the absence of taxation goes, 
these different types of self-directed accounts allow you to invest in the assets that you deem as a best fit for your portfolio, maybe not what someone else tells you is a good fit for your portfolio. And you can eliminate the variable of taxation. That That's really the key here. Because if we can eliminate the variable of taxation from our investments, we can effectively increase our return on investment. And if we increase our return on investment, we can effectively compound our money faster. Mm. And at least for me as an investor, my wife and I, the way we look at it is every day we wake up in the morning and we think, how can we move our money into different types of investments and investments that are going to yield a good rate of return? So. You know, a lot of people, they wake up in the morning and what do they do? They check their phone, their email, right? Or, you know, whatever they have to do. Facebook. <laughs> exactly. You know, we're waking up and we're thinking about how are we going to move our money today? How are we going to deploy our capital into to investments? And primarily for us, it's real estate investments, whether it's private money lending, notes, or owning individual property. And then the returns that we make when we do these investments that are self-directed IRA, as long as we're structuring it the right way, we're not paying taxes. So rental income is flowing into our self-directed accounts. We don't pay taxes. We sell the property. There's no long-term capital gains tax. If we make a loan and we have interest income flowing back in, or we buy a note, for example, which I know you guys have a lot of familiarity with, I buy a note using my self-directed funds. All of the interest income flows back into my self-directed accounts and I pay 0% tax as long as I'm structuring things the right way. So eliminating the variable of taxation compounding our interest. And that allows us to get to our financial goals and our retirement goals in a shorter period of time. And that's really the key when, you know, Bill and, and I and, and, and Wendy, you as well, we see each other routinely at, at conferences and seminars throughout the country. And when someone stops me in the elevator and they hear self-directed IRA, um, a lot of people, they don't really know what we're talking about. So what, what I routinely say is, you know, I help people get to their retirement goals and their financial goals in a shorter period of time. Well, how do you do that? Well, we do that through a self-directed IRA. And I think it's really important for folks to know that that self-directed is just an industry term. It just means that you have the ability to self-direct. If you have an IRA, 401k, Roth IRA, simple IRA, SEP IRA, HSA with another financial institution, most likely that financial institution is not going to allow you to invest in real estate or make private money loans or buy notes. So don't be surprised if you talk to your financial advisor, financial planner, or you call your current financial institution and they say, uh, no, you can buy real estate or you can invest in real estate, but you have to do it through a publicly traded real estate investment trust. Right. Well, maybe that's your strategy and that's what you want to do. And that's OK. I'm not here to give any tax, legal or financial advice as a custodian or as an individual. But if you're somebody that says, that's not the type of investment strategy that's most prudent for me, I wanna own individual properties or I wanna buy individual notes, performing, non-performing, or make private money loans, hard money loans. That's where you need a self-directed IRA. And that's what our company does. That's what we've been all about since 1974 when our company was started and founded by our company founder, Dick Desich. So I, I always like to, and I'll conclude on this section with, um, the rule of 72, um, Wendy and Bill, you probably have heard that before. So the rule of 72 tells us how quickly we double our money. So a good example is I had a real estate investor that I was working with here in Cleveland, Ohio, where my home base is at. And she bought a property, the purchase and rehab was around $100,000 and she used her self-directed Roth IRA. So $100,000 left the self-directed Roth IRA for the purchase and rehab of this property. She sold the property and she made a 40,000 after closing costs, she made about a $40,000 profit. Now that $40,000 prof, $40, in profit went back into her self-directed IRA and she paid 0% tax. So that's a 40% return on investment. If we use the rule of 72, 72 divided by 40 is one in some change, right? So she'll, mm -hmm. if she continues to do that, if she does that every year, she'll double her money every let's just say two years she'll double her money every two years now if she did that same investment with her non-ira money she'd be subject to paying short-term capital gains tax for anyone that's not familiar short-term capital gains is subject to your ordinary income tax rate now knowing her and her husband and their other income sources they would be at around the 30 percent all-in effective tax rate 
So 30% of $40,000 would be, let's say 10% of 40,000 is 4,000 times three. That would be $12,000 in taxes. Mm -hmm. So she wouldn't get, get to keep the full 40,000. That's right. It would be 40,000 minus 12, which would be what? $28,000. Mm -hmm. So her return on investment isn't 40, isn't 40%. 40 her return on investment is 28%. Right. So now we we apply that to the rule of 72, 72 divided by 28. Now it's taking us about every three years, right, to double our money instead of under two years. And so that's, a, I guess, a mathematical and a broad, broad stroke representation of compounding interest in the absence of taxation and how powerful it can be in a self-directed Roth IRA or even traditional IRA environment. You know, I, I and I, I love that you brought that up. I, I also love that you talked about how you and your wife talk about moving money. How am I going to move this today and invest it? Um, you, you're talking about compounding. There are some funds out there too that you can leave your money in there and it can compound instead of going back to your IRA, the money stays in that fund and compounds. And there are other types of investments you can do that will compound your money. The, the mistake that I think a lot of people make, and I'm guilty too, is, you know, I'm lending money through my IRA to different, um, different things that I'm doing that, and I'm getting my interest payments back into my IRA. And then that money's sitting there it, back in my IRA, not earning me any money. So, so you really do have to be on top of getting your money back out. That's really important. I think you and I, at the last event, we were talking about how much money people have in, in self-directed that they don't do anything with it. I'm, I'm amazed that they allow billions of dollars <laughs> to sit there and not earn them money. And it's just because they don't understand what all they can invest in, or maybe they, there, they lose time. I was going to say, most people aren't connected. And that's what you really need, connections with the deal flow. Um, if, you're, if you have a fear of moving your money from a directed standpoint of a money manager, because you don't want to have to get a second job trying to figure out where I'm going to put my money right. and working on the networking and getting the deals, there are many, many types of funds that are available that you could put your money into and then not have to worry about each deal. Now, that doesn't mean you ha you're not doing your due diligence on each one of the funds. Right. And you need to be diversified throughout funds, but that gives you a, a great opportunity to invest that money and not have to worry so much about, you know, is the next deal coming up and is there going to be a gap in between that's going to lower my yield. Right. right. And Equity Trust is so good about exposing their clients to a variety of options out there, to giving them um, resources to go to and learn about all the different options that are out there for investors. Yeah, absolutely. You're right about that, Wendy. Um, we do a, a lot of training, a lot of education. Um, a lot of it's available to the public on YouTube, for example. Uh, we, we built an entire YouTube channel uh, we have a ton of video content on there from what is a self-directed IRA to what are the different types of accounts, traditional, Roth, HSA, solo 401k. You're going to hear a lot of acronyms and a lot of different names out there. Uh, for all intents and purposes, they're self-directed retirement accounts. And there's different types of accounts for different types of people, depending on their situation. Uh, most commonly, you hear of a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. One is tax deferred and one is a tax-free Roth account. Uh, but beyond that, as a directed custodian, we give our clients the ability to select their own investments, do their own due diligence, and be their own money manager. You know, the one thing I'll say, Bill and Wendy, is that, and I'm sure you guys have, have seen this, observed this over the years, is there are far too many Americans, it's my belief, there are far too many Americans out there that are just relying on a third party manager. I right. mean, we go to work every day, you know, we, we work hard, right? A lot of Americans out there, you know, work 30, 35 years for, you know, a salary or an hourly wage, maybe commissions if they're in like a sales type role. Um, and they spend all these hours working in their business or for a business. And they don't spend a lot of hours uh, 
with their retirement plans, you know, and really looking at how do I move my money? How, how am I being prudent about moving my money in and out of investments? And like I like to say, increasing the velocity of my money. I love the concept of passive long-term investments like rental properties, for example, in self-directed IRAs. We have a lot of clients that do that. We have customers that make loans that are a little bit longer term in duration, you know, like a three to five year note or even a 10 year note. Uh, but then we have a lot of customers that they make a loan, they get their money back in six to eight months, and then they make another loan and they just keep right. redeploying their capital. And now they can compound their money in a, in a much faster pace in a much shorter period of time. And they have the ownership of making decisions on their own. They're not relying on a third party and at the mercy of the traditional stock market. I'm not here to, to speak ill of the traditional stock market. Uh, could you make we money are. in the traditional <laughs> stock market? I'm, I'm sure, yeah, you can. I'm sure, you, sure there's people out there that can. But um, you know, a lot of the people that I speak to, they, they're migrating in droves their retirement funds into a self-directed IRA because they they don't want all the exposure that they have to the stock market. And for some people, it's not 100% of their retirement money they wanna move into a self-directed IRA. We have plenty of folks that they wanna allocate maybe 20% of their retirement portfolio, their IRA or 401k into real estate, or maybe 30% or maybe 40%. So it depends on the individual. And like I tell everyone, diversification, I don't believe anybody can tell me what is diversification for me. The only one that can tell me what diversification is for me is me. I, I need I need to sit down and make those decisions. I need to look at the risk to return. I need to look at the potential opportunity with the real estate investments that I'm participating in. That ultimately is what's going to tell me what true diversification is, not what a financial advisor is telling me, because let's face it, there are only certain products that that advisors can sell. If, right. if their company doesn't support that product, they're not going to have the conversation with you. And that's, you know, for any advisors out there uh, or anybody that works with an advisor, I'm not trying to speak ill on on that profession. It's it's not good, bad, or indifferent. It just it is what it is. They only have right. certain products that they can sell you, and the American people, in my belief, need to understand that. Because uh, Andrew, uh, 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 Bill, uh, Andrew, a good friend of ours, you know, he he talks about this. He he talks about you know the financial advisor and that term that that we use, advisor. And, and a lot of people, they, they look to that person as they're the end all be all decision maker mm -hmm. of all things financial mm -hmm. for them. And, um, you know, he describes it as, you know, is that really fair to to call that person advisor? What are they doing? They're selling us an investment product. Right. Why don't we call them a financial salesperson? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I. I I, I sort of think about that frequently and uh, it doesn't mean don't seek out advice from a financial advisor. That's not what I'm saying. I think that there's a time and place for that. But I would argue that if you're somebody that hasn't been pleased with the performance of your retirement portfolio, your IRAs, 401ks, and other retirement plans, look elsewhere and look to yourself and make your own decisions. Well, you know, there's a lot of people, sorry, Bill, I heard you take a breath. So there's a lot of people that have a fear of, you know, if I want to lend money, am I going to have the right paperwork in place? Do I have I done the due diligence that I need to do paperwork and legal wise or and even buying a house and whatever it is using your self directed? Can I use my self directed for this? Can I use it for that? One of the things I love so much about your crew is that you can call a customer rep or a client rep and the, the answers that they have for you, they're so good about telling you what you are able to do, what you're allowed to do legally, what you're not supposed to do, what's not allowed, and the paperwork that goes along with it. When you fill out your letter of your uh, intent uh, investment, and what's it called? An LO, what's it called? Direction of investment. Yeah, I, I know where you're going with that, yep. say LOI, but no, that's what we do. So <laughs> when you fill out that direction of investment, you're asking for certain things from your client that that they need to make a, 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 a informed decision on what they're doing. So they're not going to miss getting insurance. 
on it, title insurance or whatever it is, because you're asking for all of those things to to approve that transaction, that transaction yeah. in the first right. place. So there's good guardrails there, but the quality of, of your your folks that are just answering questions is is awesome. I, I appreciate that, Wendy, and and you're right in that we do provide information and and some training around you know the do's and don'ts of of self directed IRA investments and. When folks are directing their funds for their investments, they are providing the documentation to us. And although we don't do a, a legal review uh, or approve it for the suitability of that individual, uh, we are reviewing that for what we call administrative feasibility. And so there are some guardrails there that gives our customers peace of mind when they're processing transactions through their equity trust self-directed IRA. And you are right in that there's a, what we call a direction of investment. Uh, most of everything that we do now is digitized. And so our customers can log into an online portal and they can process their transactions digitally, which is nice. Uh, customer support and service, to your point, has always been uh, number one for us. And so we still have the opportunity for folks if they want to call in and have us walk then through the transaction, we have those services available. We're staffed with right now, uh, at the time of this this uh, this video, uh, we have about 440 associates that service wow. our customers. And uh, we continue to grow every day as more and more people learn about self-directed IRA investing. And, you know, accolades to, to you, Wendy and Bill for putting on these types of um, podcasts and different types of educational forums because this is really how we get the word out there about self-directed IRA investing. There aren't billboards, there aren't national television campaigns. Um, I try to write to Money Magazine all the time about self-directed IRAs. I don't get any responses in most cases, right? Because this isn't the type of thing that mainstream finance wants to talk about. They, they don't wanna show people how to invest in alternatives with their self-directed IRAs because then they won't take their IRA and just put it with their financial advisor. And when the market right. goes down, stick their head in the sand because the reality right. is, is that's what what most people do. And I, I had, to, as I was talking there, Wendy and, and Bill, I had to mention, I, I read this article in the summer. I'm, I'm not gonna mention the publication that, that, that said this, but um, the article was all about, this is last summer when the market was down like 20%, that is the stock market. And this article was telling people, and it was one of the major financial publications, you know, so a so-called trusted source for financial education. And they were telling people when your portfolio is down, when your IRA or 401k portfolio is down, don't look at your, your account statements or don't look at your online portal on a daily basis because it's just going to create stomach indigestion for you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what in the world? What kind of what kind of advice is that? You know, like no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and this is this is what is is perpetrated. You know, and and I don't want to get too controversial here, but you know, I suppose I already <laughs> somewhat great. did. Um, but I, I challenge people to to really pay attention to their their retirement accounts, their IRAs, four hundred one ks, and um, if someone feels more comfortable with working with a financial advisor, do that. I'm not saying don't do that. Right. I'm not saying financial advisors aren't acting in people's best interest. If that's what you want to do, stay that course. But if you're somebody that says, you know what, I think I could use some of my money or all of my money in a better way, a more constructive way and invest in Main Street instead of Wall Street, a self-directed IRA would likely be a good fit for that type of person. Well, <clears throat> let's let's get back to the money management. Uh, part of this. You and I had a conversation at the last event we were attending together about uh, the, the rules being changed uh, in your 401k retirement uh, accounts and IRAs that are managed. Uh, the, and and I'm, not, I'm not getting political here. I'm just talking about the different rules. Mm -hmm. um, the previous administration wanted money managers to be the fiduciary of retirement accounts to make sure that they got the best returns for that individual. The current administration has changed those rules to make it uh, the, the, the managers more cognizant of the company's uh, green footprint and inclusion. And it has nothing to do 
with the performance. And we had this discussion before. I, I don't, as an individual, I could care less what companies that you invest in based on, you know, are, are they keeping the planet uh, cleaner? Um, are they providing more opportunity for more people across the globe? And yes, we should do that regardless of race, color, gender, uh, any of that stuff. Um, but the point is, this is your retirement money. The government should not have uh, direction on going into a company that may not give you <laughs> the rate of return that they could with someone else. Well, they've done so well with Social Security. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my point is that's why you need to be self-directed. So you can decide if you want to invest in green companies, by all means, invest in green companies. But if you are looking for the highest performance possible, you should be the one making that decision, not the third party, <laughs> right? Yeah, you, you're, yeah, ESG, that's uh, obviously a, a very hot topic right now with respect to wealth management, uh, primarily in 401ks and other employer plans. And, and I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because what folks need to understand is that when you have a 401k or a 403b or a thrift savings plan or other employer plan, in most instances, while you have that plan and you're still working for the company, you're, you're limited to only investing in certain investments. And generally you have a list, a lineup, I, I call it, of mutual funds that you can invest in. So you're gonna have your large caps, your mid caps, your small caps, and, and usually there's some services where you can speak to an advisor and they can help you allocate your 401k money that you're putting in in the appropriate locations. In some instances, there is a self-directed option, but you can only self-direct into like ETFs, mutual funds, or stocks. So you're not gonna get anything outside of the stock market. And it's interesting because there was some legislation that was being proposed last year. And in this legislation, they referenced a Georgetown University study. And in this Georgetown University study, they stated that if 401ks had just the opportunity for moderate allocations, moderate, not 100%, but moderate allocations to real estate, private equity, and hedge funds, they mentioned those three specifically, real estate, private equity, and hedge funds, that Americans would have 17% more savings in their 401ks. Wow. You can you could Google it, Georgetown University study, you know, throw in their private equity, real estate, hedge funds, you'll probably see it come up. So this is a, you know, what many would consider to be a very credible source saying that, hey, sure. the pensions, the sovereign wealth funds, the big endowments all across the country and the globe for many, 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 many years have been investing in real estate, private equity, hedge funds various other non-stock market alternative assets in order to be able to weather challenging, turbulent times in the stock market and increase return on investment. Now, I obviously have to mention that just investing in real estate and hedge funds and private equity doesn't mean that you're gonna make a better rate of return than the stock market, right? It depends on the asset. You gotta do your due diligence. You gotta understand how this works. But um, I think that that in of itself is a, is a testimony for Americans that, you know, we need to be thinking about wealth management and investment management in a little bit different through a different lens. And I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because uh, I certainly want to make sure that I am investing my money or my money is being invested for me if I'm relying on a third party based on the overall return on investment and, and purely the return on investment. Right. And that's not to undermine, um, you know, the environmental social governance aspect of what's going on in this country. Uh, that's certainly not what I'm, I'm, I'm stating. But what I will say is what a lot of our clients do is they like to invest in, in real estate and private assets because it's something that's close to home to them. You know, mm -hmm. so, for example, I have a client here who he has uh, four properties that he owns in his self-directed Roth IRA. He has two houses that are two family, and then he has two houses that are single family. And what he does is he buys these houses, he fixes them up, and then he rents these houses out, in some cases, to people that he meets through his church. 
and he doesn't charge them as high of a rent as he could charge someone else. So he, he, he offers an affordable rate for those individuals based on those circumstances. And it's all tax-free growth. So he, he can, in a way, afford to keep his rents a little bit lower because of all the tax-free growth in his Roth IRA. And from his perspective, his story, and, and I'll call it a feel-good story, is he does that because he wants to invest in his community. He wants to put people to work in his community, hire contractors, real estate agents, title companies that he knows he sees at the grocery store at church. And then he rents these properties out to people that he knows as well in this community. So, you know, when I think about, you know, how to, how to do good things for, for whether it's the environment or, um, you know, for social reasons, uh, I'm seeing a lot of self-directed IRA investors uh, do some phenomenal things for some great social causes. I have another client that buys real estate and then he rents it out primarily to veterans. So he's connected with a veteran association and he sure. helps these veterans that, you know, otherwise might be homeless. He helps them right. get into affordable housing. So just some, you know, really incredible stories that that we learn about from our clients over the years, investing in Main Street instead of Wall Street. That's awesome. So he's building a legacy while he's leaving a legacy. Yeah. This has been great, great information. How can I, people? I, I just got one more thing okay. before we get to the, to the last. Okay. I'm kind of a deal junkie, and this is what I love about IRAs. Let's say, for example, you wanted to retire in a different place than you currently live and you've got your dream area that you want to retire in. So you buy a house in that dream area uh, with your uh, self-directed IRA. At some point, perhaps you convert it to a Roth and then you rent this thing out over time. Uh, renters are paying for it. And then when it's time for you to retire, you can turn around, fix it up the way you want to and then take it as your distribution when you're old enough to do so. And then now you have your dream home in your dream location, all done through your self-directed IRA. Now you can't stay in it while it's in your IRA, but as soon as you cash it out and take it as a, as a distribution, now it's the home you're going to live in. Can Don't you, you love that? What he's doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're you, Bill. I, I, I love the I love the creative thinking um, and, and, and you're right. You know, there's there's opportunities like that. Uh, some people like to retain their money in the account and leave it as a legacy or maybe they right. want to use it in your circumstances, in your example. I think that makes a ton of sense. I'm a transaction guy as well. And one of the questions I get frequently is, what do I do if I only have a small amount of money in a self-directed IRA or HSA? And one option is partnering your IRA or HSA or whatever type of account with your other IRA money or non IRA money. So for example, I have a client that had an HSA with about 30,000 and then he had his traditional IRA and he had enough capital in there to go out and make a loan. And it was a hundred thousand dollar loan. Uh, but he thought, you know what, why don't I have my HSA involved in this deal? Because I'm going to make about, a, he was going to make about 11% return on investment. So what he did is he moved over his HSA. He had his HSA in his traditional IRA. He made a $100,000 loan, 30,000 his HSA, 70,000 his traditional IRA. And so it was a 30-70 split. And all the profits from the interest income flowed back in 70-30. When the loan paid off, when he had the balloon payment, last payment come in, that was split 70-30. I have another client, he has 10 IRAs and investment accounts for himself and his other family members. He has traditional and Roth IRAs for him and his wife. He has a solo 401k. He has an HSA. He has Roth IRAs for his two daughters and covered education savings accounts for his two daughters. And on one deal alone, he partnered all 10 accounts to make a private money loan to a mobile home park operator. And it was an equi actually an equity participation loan. So not only was oh, wow. he getting interest, but he was getting a percentage of the the net profit and uh lastly as far as small dollar investments uh, i'll say a uh, quick example i have a client that came to me about three years ago his name is doug and he opened up a roth ira and he got a couple years of contributions in there which amounted to about thirteen thousand and some change so bill and wendy as you know you can only contribute so much to an ira in 2023 you can only contribute up to 6,500 when you're under 50, 7,500 when 50 and over. So we got a couple of years of contributions in there. 
And his struggle was, how in the world am I going to put 13000 and some change to use by investing in real estate? And he's a, he's a buy, fix, and sell or buy, fix, and hold investor. That's what he does. And so I said, well, Doug, have you ever thought about partnering with another investor? He's like, well, I never thought about that. He said, well, what if I partner with myself? And I said, well, if you partner with yourself, if you do a deal between, let's say, 75 to 100,000, you only got 13,000 and some change, that's not going to be a whole lot of equity in the deal. Therefore, you're not going to get a very large profit in the IRA. And he wanted to grow his IRA quickly. So here's what he did. He had a $75,000 purchase and rehab deal in Dayton, Ohio. This was about eight months ago. And he had an investor partner that just so happened had an equity trust self-directed IRA. And guess where they met each other? They met each other at a seminar, just like we run into each other all the time, right? That's how it always yeah. starts. So he, he meets another investor at a seminar. His name is Ron. He has an equity trust IRA as well. And he says, hey, I got this opportunity. And Ron, his situation was he had money sitting in an IRA, earning little to no interest, and he was looking for an opportunity to deploy his capital into. But he wasn't a guy that was out finding investments every day. So it was a perfect marriage because you had Doug, who only had 13,000 and some change, but could find opportunities and had a deal ready to go. And then you had Ron that had money in an IRA, a healthy balance, but couldn't find deal flow. And so it was a perfect marriage. So Doug and Ron got together. They took down the property purchase. They rehabbed it. They were in it for about 75,000 and they structured it as a real estate joint venture. They had a joint venture agreement. And in that joint venture agreement, 50% of the profits were dictated to go back to Doug's Roth IRA. And then 50% of the profits were dictated to go to back to Ron's IRA. So when they sold the property and three weeks ago, I saw the settlement statement and the wire come back into Doug's Roth IRA, 47,000 and some change. He made a $34,000 tax-free profit. And I think that's really key for everybody to understand. No taxes on the right. sale of that property because it's that's in his Roth right. IRA. He'll never pay taxes ever again. He could leave it wow. to his children or grandchildren. They pay 0% tax. He's in a completely tax-free environment. So, um, you know, in, in conclusion here, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that and mention everyone, you know, compounding interest in the absence of taxation is, is really powerful. And that's, I think, a great representation of how that works. I love it. Well, we always say that compounding returns are the eighth wonder of the world. You add <laughs> uh, no taxation on top of that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very it's, powerful. We're in a stuff. different universe, I say, Bill. You know, like yeah. it's not even, we're not even on planet Earth at that point. That's how yeah. passionate I am. But that's so, so true. John, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how can people uh, get a hold of you, uh, get some information about Equity Trust? Yeah, real easy. Uh, website is trustetc.com. Uh, looks like trust, et cetera.com or just do a Google search of equity trust company. You'll find us uh, pretty, pretty easily. And um, also we have a, a great, I mentioned our YouTube channel. I always plug that when I, when I come on podcasts, um, you know, it's, it's not self-serving. There's a lot of education on there. It's there aren't hypey videos. Um, so you can check out our YouTube channel. Uh, obviously those videos are free. You don't have to put in your name or email or anything like that. So you can go to YouTube and search equity trust company and you'll find all types of video content, actually quite a, a few videos, Wendy and bill about, uh, private money lending and buying notes with your self-directed IRA. That's a very popular strategy that our customers utilize, which I know you guys know a lot about as well and talk a lot about on your show. So um, yeah, look forward to you know speaking to anybody that's interested in talking more. You could always call in and talk to one of our agents uh, that are always standing by and happy to answer questions for you. And we're not, we're not uh, financial advisors. We don't sell investment products. So when you call into us, you have the peace of mind knowing that you're not going to be involved in a, in a sales pitch or you know, we're trying to sell you some sort of investment product that may or may not be good for you. We're here just to educate and help you self-direct your account on your own. Excellent. And we'll have all those links uh, at the bottom of this video. Right. So uh, John, thank again, you. thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure seeing you good again. Stuff. I'm sure we will run into each other shortly at <laughs> another event. <laughs> yes, we will. We will. I look forward to it. I'm sure it'll be in the next few weeks. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, uh, folks, thanks again for joining us on the Real Estate Investment Show. We are Carolina Capital Management, and uh, we will see you on the next show. Take care. Mm -hmm.